<laughs> G'day guys, Dom here. So the first episode of the Friday Knife Drop, and it's gonna be a little bit awkward for me, I'm not gonna lie. I've never talked to a camera like this before, I'm not like directly staring at a camera, and uh, I think this is what a cam girl feels like. I feel like I'm gonna be showing you my ass, maybe it's gonna sell some knives, we'll see. Anyway, so the idea behind this is I wanna kind of show you some knives, show you what's on the website, give you an idea about the knives, and yeah, give you a bit more personal approach to selling knives essentially. You can see the knives, see me using knives, you can get a better idea of size, what you're buying, and it makes it a little more personal than just you know, buy now on the website. And the thing I really like about YouTube, I feel like it's a lot more personal than Instagram or Facebook for promoting my business essentially because you can kind of see me, you can see what's involved, you can hear different tones of my voice about the knives, and I, I feel like it's a better way of doing business than Facebook and Instagram essentially. So we'll see how this goes. At the moment, the, temp the setup is very, very temporary. Um, but if it kicks off, we can do a whole bunch of cool stuff. Um, my first thought would be a bigger banner, like a big fuck off banner right here behind me um, and better lighting because these LEDs are garbage. Um, probably put two big ones at, like next to me here and make the whole setup more professional. But again, we'll see if this is popular. You guys might fucking hate it and hate me, hate my face, hate everything. So we'll see. Anyway, let's just get stuck right into it. So first up, we'll start off with the Primus knives. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Primus is my line lock design. I designed this back in probably 2017. Um, and for those of you who don't know, this knife took me about almost 10, I'd say, um, attempts to design it and prototypes and a whole lot of effort went into this design. And I've made about probably 20 to 30 at this point and they're a fucking rock solid knife. I have very little issues with them, and the feedback with these is that they're a solid knife. Um, everybody seems to love the Primus. They work well, and it actually won an award a few months ago at the 2019 Queensland Knife Show. Anyway, so Primus. Uh, the first batch were all in CPM 154, stainless steel, and they're also all with titanium liners. And these are all rock solid little knives. I actually love the Primus. My personal carry is the Primus prototype, so you can tell it is a beast little knife. Um, they're a little bit over three inch blade, and they're very nice, easy to carry, and very, very lightweight. Even though there's a big fuck off blade on these things, the weight on these is very reasonable. So that one there is on the website in the OD Green. One of my favorite promises I've ever made, just because it's uh, very much my style. You've got the blue, you've got the green, and the distressed look, kind of like an old school tank. Um, next to it, we have this promise that I finished up last week. This is in CP154 again with a nice high hollow grind. And this is actually the knife that made me completely redesign the internals in the Primus. This had every single issue you could possibly have with a, a line lock in it. This has gone through two blades at this point, at least one pair of liners, if not two. Um, definitely a fresh lock side was in there. And it has been a fucking nightmare. The customer on this guy waited a really, really long time and was very, very patient with me because this was a complete pain in the ass to build from start to finish. But it's done now, it works, and it's going to be going out to the customer Monday. And it is a rock solid little knife. Finally, it functions like it should, because locking liners, um, folders like this are notoriously difficult when it comes to tuning and getting them to work perfectly, where the action is nice and crisp, and you have that nice crisp detent, and that everything just works the way it should. But, so yeah, redesign's coming on the Primus. Gen 2 is going to be dropping in a few months. I'm still working through the CAD on that and going through specs, um, trying to price it out a little bit. I'm hoping to do it in 20 CV, um, but we'll see how that goes because 20 CV is notoriously hard to work with, expensive, and I do want to kind of come in at a price point around about the $550 mark for the Primus knives. So if it's possible, 20 CV will do it. At the moment, it's not looking like it, but we'll see. Um, next up, we have the slivers. Now, these are a fucking cool little friction folder. I actually quite love these little knives. Um, these are in, uh, this one's in ABL stainless steel. This is in with titanium frames. And when it comes to friction folders, if you really like a nice action on friction folders, go with titanium. They have a bit of a nicer thunk to them and they just function that a little bit better than the G10 versions. And they also have that slightly cooler look because you can do the brush stuff and the chamfers and that, all that sexiness. Um, with this one, I did the brush look and these chamfers are just oh so sexy with the rounded backspacer and we've done some decorative jimping here. It is in a belt finished satin bevels and the flats in here are all bead blast stone wash. And these guys are also the first knives that have been rolling out with the new serial numbers. So 
Serial numbers is something I've wanted to do for a while. It kind of makes it a little bit more special because guys can kind of say, oh, I've got number one, two, three, four, whatever, of the Primus series knives, or the Sliver series knives. That makes ownership a little bit cooler for you guys. And also, the sneaky thing, it makes my life a whole lot easier because now I can have a digital record of every knife I make. Which, with fixed blades, isn't a huge idea. With folders, it's fucking critical, man. Like, I can now be able to have a digital record of the size of a stop pin, for instance, and for whatever reason, if a stop pin needs to be replaced, I can now mail the customer a correct size stop pin that they can then install to their knife, no dramas. So, it makes warranty work, repair work, all that sort of stuff a whole lot easier for everyone else involved and makes owning one of my knives a whole lot nicer because um, I can basically give you back up the top notch service and warranty work on these a whole lot easier. Um, next to it we've got this guy that's actually been chipped off um, Monday. This is Salt. This is an Attack for Steel with the VG10 core, all stainless steel. Um, the thing about Tech of Steel is that I have quite a bit of trouble getting it sometimes, so uh, it's kind of rare. So if you see an off mine that you like in Tech of Steel, I suggest jumping on it right away because the chance of me being able to make a second one of those is very, very small. Um, this one's in G10 liners, it's all been sandblasted, nice red G10 backspacer, and all the hardware has been beat blasted for that nice two tone. Um, titanium pivot, and yeah, we've got a nice rock solid little sliver. And these guys are screaming sharp, so definitely a very, very cool little EDC. One of my favorites. Um, we'll go over to the Brutes now. So these are the Brute series of knives. These are my pocket fixed blades. I've designed them so they fit nicely in a front pocket. And you can see they just disappears in there, no problem. This one here is in a triple hollow grind. We've got a five inch contact wheel um, used for the main grind, a 10 inch for the top grind, and a two inch from the top for the switch. So that gives you kind of a really aggressive, mean, nasty look in this guy. Um, but it's a rock solid little knife. Everything's nicely rounded. Got the Anzo pack and the G10, in the Mikado, sorry, Mikado pin, which I'm really liking recently. And a nice big bold fuck off logo. Um, this one's currently available on the website. And you've got that nice polished edges on the Kydex, that really nice feel for the Kydex, so you know someone spent a really long time making this knife the best it can be. Next up we have this guy, this is another brood, polished edges again, this one is in Samwise steel. So you can see we've got a VG10 core again, um, pretty much all the Samwise Damascus I use is stainless steel, I'm not a huge fan of carbon steel so um, most of it's all stainless. Um, stainless steel jacket, and you can see we've got a really sexy copper nickel in there, which is really, really nice. One of the things I love about tactical steel is that really bright pop of, um, of shining. That's where the nickel comes in. We've got a swedge on this thing, and if you look closely, you can see the nickel in the swedge as well. Um, my Carter handles polished up nicely, and my Carter pins, rock solid on knife, and a screaming, screaming sharp little knife as well. This one's rather pretty thin, so it is just a fucking lightsaber. Um, next up, we have the Ukumu. Now, the Ukumu was previously known as the D9. Um, now I've gone through and I've changed the names of the whole D series of knives because people were getting confused and thinking that it was like D6 steel instead of the model name, which is the reason why we're changing them all. Um, this one is actually the, um, this one's called the Kumu, as I said, and the Kumu is Japanese for nightmares. This is in Takafu steel again. You've got that nice sexy proper nickel, and uh, this is in Coca Cola wood handles. Now, wood is one of those things where I absolutely hate working with it. It's a, uh, um, this is actually a cocoa ball wood with copper handle, pin, sorry. Um, cocoa ball wood is becoming a little bit rarer and rarer these days because the, the tree it comes from is now endangered, so it's kind of hard to get the, the timber for these now. Um, I bought the timber for this a while ago, so uh, that's uh, lucky for me, I guess. So if you like cocoa ball wood, jump on it because it's going to be harder and harder to get. And last but not least is these guys. These are my... Uh, 10 mil fixed surgeons. This is a sprint run I did um, last year. We've got the 3D logo on there, and you can see the absolute crazy thickness on these guys. Um, this is ADC IV high carbon steel, and a bit of a uh, yeah, a bit of a taking the piss knife, but they're actually really, really functional knives. And the people that own these really, really love them. I've had very positive feedback from these guys. Um, I've only made six of these things, and I very, very much doubt it's going to be another batch. So if you like them jump on them. We've only got um, two of these left in stock, so uh, yeah, it's the last one. And you might be worrying about the thickness of these guys. These are actually really, really sharp, even though they're 10 mil thick, because again, 
They're hollow ground and they grind pretty thin with a five inch contact wheel. So they do actually shave and they do what function well as a knife. And they all, all come with a rock solid cutter sheet as well. Nice retention. And uh, yeah, that's the surgeons. All right, so there we go guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys like this style of video, let me know. And we'll obviously do more of it and upgrade the setup and all that fancy shit. And if not, well, obviously, no harm done. Experiment at this point. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in my next video.